So I'm headed to a, a location I have I have never been to before. This is an area of the Blue Ridge Mountains that I have not explored and paid near enough attention to. And I wanted to kind of come up here before the fall gets going, before I head to Iceland, just as kind of like a, a, scout, a scouting mission, if you will, and just kind of see if this is a location that's worth coming back in the fall. I've heard great things about this spot. The, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting too much today. There's literally not one cloud in the sky, but you never know what could uh, what could happen. You never know when the sky could pop off or the clouds could move in or fog or mist could move in or whatnot. But I'm gonna be here overnight and yeah, you know, at first I wasn't even gonna come up here tonight. I was just gonna park the van, make some dinner, just relax. But then I was like, you know what? The giddiness got to me a little bit. I was like, you know what? Let me get up here and just see exactly what this is all about before I try and hike in the dark tomorrow morning. So uh, I'm gonna keep on going and we'll see what happens. Man, what an absolutely incredible view up here. It was kind of a pain to get up here. It's, uh, I don't know exactly how far it was. It really wasn't too far, but it was just like straight up and it was very rocky and it's hot and humid. I know I've mentioned that about a thousand times, but it was just a little bit exhausting. But uh, the view is certainly worth it up here. It is just beautiful. I've just been kind of taking a few moments here and trying to gather myself, cool off a little bit, and just enjoy this before I, you know, whip out the, the big camera and start looking for compositions to try and frame up something. It's a, it's a typical hazy summer North Carolina evening, but um, there are a few high clouds it looks like, so there could be a sunset that catches. I'm not uh, expecting a whole lot, but this is definitely going to be a location that I want to come back to in a few weeks once all of these uh, trees start to turn. This area has got such cool kind of rock formations everywhere. I'm trying to see if there's something that I can do using these as foreground interest or, you know, leading lines to draw the viewer's eye into something in this kind of general area here. This seems to be the area where the most interesting uh, rock formations are. Plus sunlight should be illuminating or will be illuminating this entire side. So this is probably the best angle to be shooting at right now. So I think this is gonna be the area that I'm gonna be focusing on right here. I'm not super wild about the overall composition. Here's how I have it framed up right now. Uh, brighten this up a little bit. Vertical orientation. Got this area right here in the foreground kind of leaning up here and there's a little break in the clouds where that upper portion of the I guess, cliff face is kind of pointing to, which is kind of neat, but it's not my favorite. I'm kind of chasing the, the light, not necessarily chasing the light, but just chasing the fact that I need to get out of here before it gets too dark or I will never be able to get off the top of this mountain. So I'm doing a, I think a three or four shot uh, focus stack just for the immediate foreground, the, the kind of bluffs in the, the background of the cliff face in the background, and this kind of bushy area right here in, in the mid ground and then of course the mountains in the background. It might be a little bit of an overkill, but I know I mentioned this in a video before, I, over, I always overshoot focus stacks or exposure blends just so I have enough information when I get home and I can just discard whatever I don't need, but always better, better to have it once you uh, get back to the, uh, the, the proverbial dark room than to, uh, to not have it at all. So I um, probably could get away with a three shot focus stack here, but uh, I just want to be safe. But some nice light is starting to illuminate this, uh, this rock face here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a few more images right now. Not a bad place to hang out for a sunset. Actually, the sky's starting to, to shape up like there could be a, uh, a decent sunset. Some clouds are starting to blow in, but whatever does, does occur is going to be very short-lived because there's a lot of haze on the horizon. So once the, uh, once the sun gets anywhere close to that zone, it's going to get snuffed out pretty quickly. But uh, might only have maybe 10 or 15 more minutes of decent light, and then it'll be time to uh, hopefully find the trail back down. Oh, 
how about that for perfect timing? Right when we just took that last series, uh, that focus stack series, or I just took a focus stack series, the sun dropped right behind those clouds back there and all of the light is completely gone now. So I definitely got the, the very last bit of light on this, uh, this cliff face here. I could wait around a little bit longer to see if these clouds catch any color, but in all honesty, I don't think they're going to. Plus, I, I really need to make sure that I get off the top of this mountain back down to the van because I'm in not, nowhere near prepared to spend an evening up here. And I need to try and get back down there with uh, as much light as I possibly can. So I'm going to pack things up, head back down there, make some food. Plus, I'm going to show you some things in the van. I haven't done a van update video in a couple months, so I'm excited to show you a couple things in there as well. And then um, camp out tonight and then head back up here tomorrow morning for what hopefully will be an incredible sunrise. gonna kind of relax here a little bit probably work work on editing this video here and then uh, hit the hay here pretty soon I'm gonna get up really early but probably about maybe an hour before sunrise and head back up to the uh, the top of the uh, the rim of the uh, the gorge and see if we can get something uh, decent for a sunrise hopefully there's some some good light some good color in the sky but uh, fingers crossed so we will pick this up here shortly found the composition here that I like. Problem is, once again, the forecast was spot on a very clear and hazy morning, but the sun is setting over to the left, and I'm hoping it's gonna cat throw some light on this little uh, mountain in the background and uh, illuminate that cliff face right there. There's some trees right here kind of framing up everything. I'm in a portrait orientation. I got my longer lens on. This is the 100 to 200 and I'm, I'm zoom in, zoomed into around 130 right now. I might actually go in a little bit tighter just to see, whoops, exactly what that does. Actually, I think I like it more around the 150 range because I get more of that V of those uh, trees in the uh, the foreground that kind of uh, mimic the shape of the of the mountain in the background and whenever there's you know no clouds in the sky which frankly in the summertime is pretty uh, a pretty common occurrence I always try and put on my my longer lens and just try and find kind of smaller vignettes in the landscape and really just do whatever you can to eliminate as much of the sky as you possibly can and that's fantastic when you're at a location like this, when there's kind of mist kind of, or fog blowing in and out throughout the, the valleys or the mountains. And you get a little bit of light on maybe some cliff faces and just kind of zooming in, isolating that and capturing that and just trying to eliminate as much of that bland and kind of boring or washed out sky as you possibly can. In this scenario, kind of struggling a little bit because I'm having a hard time isolating this mountain without any sky in it. And there's not a whole lot of mist or fog, at least anywhere that I can capture it, that would be kind of photogenic at all. So um, I'm gonna keep kind of looking around here just to see if there's a smaller vignette that I can capture.
So I shifted my composition over towards this direction and the opposite direction of where the sun is rising just because there's a little bit more interest. There's some kind of little fog and mist in the valley. So I'm trying to, to isolate that. The trouble I'm having is just trying to, to shoot over a lot of these trees because the trees in this scenario are really not adding any kind of, any kind of a additional interest or not really helping the composition at all. So I'm just trying to find that subtle vignette. I switched from a a portrait orientation into a landscape orientation just for the sheer purpose of trying to eliminate those trees in the bottom corner. I'll show you what I mean right here. You can kind of see, let me see if I can darken this up a little bit. You got these trees kind of in the bottom right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner. I was trying to get those out of the frame, but I'm zoomed all the way into 200 millimeters, but I kind of like the layering effect of this image. You got a little bit of the, the mist back there in the valley. You got this kind of stone cliff face right here in the immediate foreground. Then you got another layer of mountains in the background. So it's kind of, and the whole scene is kind of being pulled together by the, the longer focal length. So nothing incredible, but it is eliminating a good portion of the sky. Um, although there is a, a little bit of color coming into the sky right now. Not really sure how well that's going to come through with this image, but uh, we'll see. But uh, the sun has risen. How long ago? Oh, actually, right now. It'll take a little bit of time though to to get to the point where it starts to kind of throw a little bit light, a little bit of light in this general direction. But I'm not expecting a a whole lot in the way of uh, a dynamic lighting can lighting situation here, but. Uh, a little bit of light or a little bit of color up there would be nice to kind of help pull the entire photograph together. I normally shoot with a uh, with auto white balance, but it was making the scene just far, far too cool. So I shifted it over to a day. Well, I've been kind of bouncing back and forth between like daylight and clouding shade white balance just to kind of warm it up just a little bit to remove that kind of blue cool color cast. Usually auto white balance does a pretty good job, I find, in camera, but a lot of times in kind of like the blue hour time where we just were, we're kind of getting into the, the golden hour time now, but a lot of times it makes those colors just really, really cool and puts that real kind of cold blue color cast on the overall image. So I always kind of like to warm it up with either daylight or cloudy white balance. So here's the, the final composition right here. Just kind of layers of these mountains in the background with a th thin film or thin film, thin layer of uh, fog and mist between a few of these uh, mountain ranges in the background little bit of color really really hazy in the sky in the background and you can see a little bit of light starting to, to kind of fill in right through here on these um, on the stone cliff faces here i guess it's the the western side of the gorge so uh, it's nothing incredible i don't know sometimes these types of images turn out better once you edit them but uh, it's nothing insanely exciting just yet but there's a little bit of light really really starting to come through now so i'm gonna go ahead and take a, a few more of these images There's a little bit of light hitting that uh, cliff face of that mountain right there. So I switched my composition back around. I'm really just trying to, I don't know if you can even see that, get a, a little bit of variety here. I think a lot of these images are going to end up being black and white just because the colors are just so, so dull in this entire scene. Just hazy. I was going to put on a polarizer, but I honestly don't even think it's really even worth fussing with. But. I think it'll be fun to, to try and convert a lot of these to black and white, just to see if there's something that I, I can pull out of these because I never do any kind of black and white photography very rarely, but this is a, one of the scenarios I think is a, a perfect use case for converting things to black and white when the colors of an image are almost a distraction with the overall photograph just because they're, they're so muted, they're so dull, they're so uninspiring or exciting. I think that's a great scenario to uh, convert those types of images to black and white. So I might try and do that in this video just to see exactly what I can do, see if there's something that I can kind of create, turn, what do they say, turn lemons into lemonade or lemonade, whatever the case, whatever the saying is, just to see if there's something that I can do that uh, kind of creates something that's uh, a, little bit, a little bit exciting.
So even though I don't think I'm going to get any real portfolio style of uh, photographs out of this trip, it was still good to, to get out. This is, I'm always chasing forecasts, and when the forecast doesn't look super promising, I usually won't go out. But this time I, I knew the forecast did not look like it was great from a photo photographic perspective, but it was absolutely fantastic just to get out here. An amazing place to watch the sun rise, watch the sun set last night. Very peaceful, very quiet. Great to just get out in the woods, get out in nature, away from the hustle and bustle and everything. But most importantly, just to get out of my own comfort zone. So many of these photographs I probably will convert to black and white, and I have not converted an image to to black and white in probably over two years. So I'm looking forward to uh, doing something a little bit different. Like I said, getting out of my comfort zone, trying to broaden my horizons a little bit. And I think that's what uh, a lot of, uh, I think that's what I should do more of in the summertime because I, I very rarely ever capture any images that I, I absolutely love in the summertime. And I should use that time to, to kind of broaden my horizons, practice things that I normally don't practice, and just see if I can just uh, get a little bit better at a different uh, style of photography or just kind of push my own creative uh, limits or um, self-imposed limits, I should say, just to see if I can uh, improve. Always striving to improve. That's the name of the game, I suppose. So I'm going to hang out here just a little bit longer, put the camera away, and just relax, just enjoy the just the, the being away from, from all the, the noise and the chatter of everyone's, uh, you know, the daily grind that we're all a part of and just kind of reconnect and just kind of relax a little bit. So I'll pack things up here in a bit and head back to the van and this will more than likely be the end of the video. So I do appreciate you checking out this week's video. If you enjoyed it, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you checking out this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.